looking at you, you, you spoke the other day, I think, about how maybe the likes of Jeff Hendrick and Alan Ridley few lads haven't played. Yeah. But there might, might be a factor at the, the point of the match. With that in mind, would you be tempted to, to try and include some of those players in order to try and get some more minutes? There's a, there's a dilemma, isn't there? Whether <clears throat> I try and include those who have not had minutes as opposed to trying some of those who have had no minutes at international football. Um, and I can't do both. Hey, um, you spoke about Mark's options being a left-back. Um, it's, it's been a while since he did it. Would you have any concerns about that? And from that point, point of view, is it... James not here to make the trial out tomorrow. Concerns about Matt? If well, obviously he did have a long sit there, but it has been quite some time ago. Is that a concern? Yeah, but he's, he's, he's been a fullback all his life. So, he, I mean, just the fact that he hasn't played there, it doesn't mean to say he, he loses that ability to play that position. Um, he had two really successful seasons at it. Um, I'm sure he had two, he certainly had one. No, I wouldn't be concerned about him at all. Not in in any shape. He's a fullback and he can play. He can play either side. I think if I asked Seamus to play a left back, I don't think it'd bother him either. It might be difficult if he's putting balls up with his left foot, but they're, they're, listen, they're good enough to come on the inside and play. And if I if I if I start sitting here and say I'm worried about it, then. Uh, what does that say to any of the players when I say oh, I'm worried, I'd be worried if I played him there? Not a chance, no, he'd be fine. And you know what? You've just got to get on with it and do it. Well, so you said um, maybe a week ago that um, I thought at least you suggested that James. That's played. different, that though, isn't it? Yeah, I said, or at least I suggested. I suggested. Go on. <laughs> That, uh, that James McLean was was kind of number two for the left back position. Certainly, you'd have no concerns about playing him there. And, no, I wouldn't. And, and since then, you've sort of made it clear that you want to play him there uh, 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 tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, um, what what's kind of it, it seems like a natural move to, to play him there ahead of the game next month to have a look at him there, but. What, what is, what's shaped your thinking? I don't think that I don't think that 90 minutes against Bulgaria is going to make any difference at all uh, in terms of him playing there. I really don't. If I had to play him there. Uh, I wonder what I'd do if I lost his energy and his drive and that ability to close down from the front and chase back and nick it off him and put a cross in and we score the equaliser. I, I really appreciate that what he does. So. Uh, I just tell you, the left back slot isn't concerning me. If, if I look and think he's not there, if Stephen Ward's playing, I'm sure he'd come back and play. If Greg Gunningham's playing, he'll come back and play. They've been playing it all their lives, 90 minutes in this. He's not going to bother me. Yes, Philip. Uh, two things. First on the left back, you haven't mentioned Cyrus Christie. Nobody's asked me about him. Why would I bring it up? <laughs> I walked through the dugout, it's Cyrus Christie. Well, he has played left back for our performer. And as, you know, he, as, yeah. is he someone who's been given this week? So he's, he's, no, no. Mm -hmm. no. Conor Hurran's playing left back tomorrow. Okay. Oh, yeah. Is that the team? No. That's the one little bit he'll get. He can like that foot and he can pick up all in his team. Wonderful left foot, hasn't he? Yeah. Wouldn't it be amazing if he played really well tomorrow and everybody goes, oh, wow. And if he doesn't? Well, there's nothing ventured, nothing gained. But he's one of those that's not been playing, and I'd like him to have some more minutes. He wanted to have some more minutes, so he'll be playing there. Are you going to? I know you want to tell the team that the keepers a little uh, juicy snippet. Appreciate that. That's okay. Gonna, it's a pleasure. Are you going to stick with the, the back back four? <laughs> yes. Um, but the point is, um, after the result last night, two wins out of three games will qualify out of a top two finish. Would you back yourself, your staff and your players? That should be nice and easy then, won't it? Well, would you Georgia want? away, Switzerland away and Denmark at home. I want you to say so far, do you think that you, the staff, the players can get those two wins? I've, uh, I think I've shown confidence in myself and my staff and the players all the way through. <coughs> Nothing's ever changed that. We've tried to win every game. We went to Denmark and tried to win that and at the end of it we may well have nicked it. And uh, we tried against Switzerland to beat them, we didn't, but we've, we've remained unbeaten. 
I, I've always got confidence in us that we can win the games, yes. Just asking Connor Hurran what, what sort of um, I don't make make you feel that he can he can fulfil that role at that back other than his very good left. Uh, well, he is a, he's a very intelligent player, that's for sure. Uh, he's got a wonderful left foot. If we can get him further up the pitch and get him so he can deliver crosses, then we should <coughs> we should get a bit of joy out of that. We'll see whether he can, <coughs> depending on who's, a bit, who's up against him, if he's got a flying winger, <coughs> can he deal with it? But he's going to get 90 minutes and he might not get that many more between now and next month so and at least I'll have had a look at him and see that might be another string to his bow um, and all the others I know they can play there and playing against Bulgaria is not going not to convince me one bit more that Stephen Ward's any better or Greg Cunningham can do it he was with us all, all in the summer James McLean My, that problem will come in October that issue and I'll deal with it then with, with Connor, Rick, um, you, you said you'd be telling the players this morning um, <laughs> um, when you play somebody like Connor in, in a relatively unfamiliar position. Do you sit down and talk to him about that before you make that decision, or, or is it a question of just trusting him and wanting to have a look at it and just tell him what? No, I spoke to him yesterday about it. Yeah. And he, he's, he's confident that that, that, that he's, he, you know, he's happy to to, to make that. Absolutely, I think I think it's 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 also my job not to give him any doubts about it. You know, do you think you could defend? Or, oh, do you think you could uh, get forward? Do you think you could make the tag? Do you think you defend the far post? Have you hold it? What do you think he's thinking about playing me there for? I wouldn't even do that. Uh, yeah, I sat down and spoke to him about it, and uh, where he trained in the game, doing it, and TC was there giving him a few pointers, and we'll see. If you were to convert Stephen Ward into that position at Wolves, I mean, is it something? Is it a position you think that just players can learn with a certain amount of experience that they can adapt to at full back uh, Is there any points at stake tomorrow night except trying to find things out? Would you agree? Yeah. Well, why would I not try? What happens if he ends up being? He looks amazing. He's got he's got all the tools to play there. That's for sure. Uh, what is he, six foot, defend the far post, he's competitive enough, he's got a great left foot. If we're trying to play out the back then, and we do, he can certainly play from there. He's a, he's a central midfield player, he has to track runners, he has to defend from that position. Is it a finer nuance as course there are, but wouldn't it be great if he turned out and all of a sudden I'm thinking, well I've got one that can play there. Yeah. That's the reason for the game. You're asking me about trying others, 21s who I would never know whether they'd come in and they'd compete and play. I've got a senior international footballer who actually is looking forward to playing there. McAllen Brown has been very unfortunate with injury in the last year or so. Um, is he a player you want to have a look at an extended run for us to see? Alan Brown's impressed me this last this last trip. Actually, it was a, it was a shame for him last time because I think he was. He'd been carrying injuries from before. I don't think he was that confident. He then ended up getting another knock and he had to go home. But he's, he's impressed me in training. I've been really pleased with him. Is he someone you think that could come in soon into the team of competitive matches? I've no reason why not. Not having seen him play for Preston on a number of occasions. He's, uh, I, I, I was talking a lot about him last year because I think he got 12 goals when we were talking about him coming in. Uh, and. We've not had that many goals in this campaign, so if you can add them from midfield, it'd be great. Uh, you've a soft spot for centre-halves, which I think is a interesting observation. Most of them are hard as freaking nails. Yeah, well, um, it's a bit of a John Egan thing. has been very good with Sheffield United this season, and he's been around the squad for a few months. I'm not looking for, you know, the team as such. You ask me about anybody else, I'll give you a hint, I'll give you a corner. I appreciate that. I'll go for a fish in the end. Uh, John Egan is a good one. He'll be really good. He'll be rock solid. He'll be very loyal towards him. Uh, Egan has been there, you know, pushing him and trying him, pushing himself. Told him yesterday he's you know, he's waiting for his chance, but patiently for his chance. Is that chance going to come tomorrow? Can't tell you. <laughs>
<laughs> well, I haven't told them yet, so I'm hardly going to tell you or anybody else, or you as, as in the group. Yeah. The group. Not, I'm not just picking on you, Philip, of course. Yeah, but, uh, what do you like about him? <clears throat> Everything about him. See, that's, that's, the, that's the issue, isn't it? I like him, and they go, well, I've got two centre halves. We've, we've, of course, we've conceded. We've been, we've been great at the back. We've not, we've not scored that many, but we've not conceded that many. We've been a really good defensive unit. So, it's, it's not that I, the ones who aren't playing, it's that I don't I dislike them in any shape or form. It's just that we've got a good unit together. So, he's got an opportunity if I decide to pick him. As has Kevin Long or anybody else that might get a game. Does yeah, that answer know. for you? Well, you never know. I mean, we all know we've all left back at the moment, Stevens. But I mean, anybody that gets injured now in the next four weeks, so you, you probably need to have a look at one or two people anyway, in case. I've said, I think when I first answered the question, to be honest, I said I'd be, I will be playing some, maybe some different ones, some changes. I think, so just, just in terms of when you say that uh, you don't need to look at the likes of Greg Conning and Stephen Ward against Bulgaria because they, they're so well versed. In fact, it's a friendly game. How much stock will you put on somebody coming in and, and playing, who maybe hasn't played or playing in a different role? Like how much value do you put on that because of the nature of the game? See who he's playing against. So if he's playing against the flying right wing and he nullifies him and he gets four and puts crosses in, why would I not? I mean, he's a. He's a very good player for us in the middle of the park. Um, and quite clear that I'm not going to play him there, so it does get him some minutes on the pitch and playing in a different position, but it's something I can have a look at. You know, it's, uh, it's just one of those chances, isn't it, that I get a chance to have a look at somebody, and if it turned out he played wonderfully well, you know, everybody would be saying, oh, that's great, yeah, fantastic. If he plays badly, then they'd be saying, I can't believe he played him there. I even thought about playing there. Well, that's the chance I have to take. It's a friendly to have a look at him. And is it harder for players to break in? Like, previously, the qualification campaign was maybe 14. Yeah, she was quite impressed with the 21s left back the other night. <coughs> oh, he did really well. Um, sorry? Daddy Lee, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I don't have everybody's names imprinted in my head. He played. Uh, he played well. Um, but is it a game for uh, equally again? Is it a game for? A, and what do you say? Is it harder to get in the squad? Is it? Sorry, I, well, I, so I just like a previously qualification campaign for 14, 15 months, whereas this one is eight months essentially. Is it hard for somebody to break in when the fixture is so uh, jam-packed and you, you kind of need a group that you can rely on and maybe go with them rather than maybe looking beyond that as much? Of course, it is. It's. Uh, I don't know, playing Connor, but you need tried and, tried and trusted players and tested players, the experienced players to play in them. You've just, you've just seen Denmark play against Georgia and that's, that's our next game. And then Switzerland, you've just seen us play there and you saw what a good side they are. And Denmark, it's, I've got to have the most seasoned pros out playing. And Steven's got his best 21s, he's, he's grooming them for future things in the first team. You know, when he gets, he can put them all in, and it'd, it'd be wonderful because they may well have been in the Euros and done exceptionally well, and they'll all be ready to step up. Um, but not just yet for me. Just on, on the 21s, you mentioned Aaron Connolly, and, and he, he had the crowd on the edge of their seat every time. Oh, he was great. He had me on the edge of my seat. Did, did it? Did it feel a bit like looking at Damien Duff? Was there a little bit of deja vu as he was? Some... No. <laughs> <laughs> No, but how, I I'm mean, not giving him that label. No, no, no. no, no. Just, uh, like. But I mean, a lot of people looked at him and thought it was a bit of a flashback to young, the young Goff. But just in terms of his style and his electrifying drill, I thought he style, was. Exciting, he I thought he was exceptional on the night. And that, what I loved about him is that there's not many now because they all tend to play on the opposite side. They all want to come on the inside and play, and nobody's really got the. Uh, the balls to stand Seamus up on his, on his and say, right, I'm going to run down the outside of you and I'm going to take you on and I'm going to keep taking you on and by the way, I'm going to keep going past you and put crosses in. Not many do it, do they? They all want to go on the inside. Mm. It's um, been a few. <laughs> <laughs> it must be you that take you on, it's just you. But that obviously had a few that take Seamus on. Uh, it was great to see him do it and then, and then when of course if they doubled up, he's happy to come on the inside and play and play in the front man. So I thought he was 
He was, him and Malumbi were the two standout players. I, I really liked his performance, that's for sure. I mean, the goal he set up was great. Mm -hmm. James, as a fullback yourself, do you, do you sit down with Connor or have you in terms of talking of true aspects of the role and what's that attributes? He didn't know he was playing. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know he was playing. Or will you sit down? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's something that when, I suppose, when James played there a couple of times, James was very eager to learn it all. James McLean, and he did ask a few little things about what position to be. It is, it's, it's different to, to playing left or right wing, just the position side of it. But yeah, a few pointers to James and that, but I'm sure, I'm sure Connor will be fine and he's got the manager and if he needs anything, he can, he can run it by me or, or end it. But um, he is a very good player, Connor, and uh, very confident, so I'm sure he'll, he'll fit in, no problem. Um, <laughs> um, and I Roy Keane was in town last week. He made some negative comments towards John Walton, Stephen Ward, and Harry Arthur, Stephen Ward. You mentioned that somebody looking at the moment. He made some negative comments towards good pros. Any reaction from you on that? Uh, in regards to Jonathan Walters, well, there's comments made by Roy, former captain, about the uh, comments towards <laughs> good pros, Walters. Why would I have any comment on that? Did he did he comment about me? No. No. <laughs> I don't think I should. I don't think I should comment then. You know, you're not going to get me to comment on that. Well, I can't even believe you were naive enough to ask. Well, I kept at the very end. I mean, it was a talking point there last week, you know, and not within the squad, but certainly not with me. You know, I know it wasn't mentioned at all, but it just mentioned now in the safety of Monday. I didn't want to get, didn't want to get the daggers off you. Night, I don't know, I've given it to them this morning, have I? No, yeah. no you've been good for I had a good night's sleep last night, this morning. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you approve generally of players going around and the adult shows and making comments about former players? That's something you haven't done, but just on a general observation. I, uh, I mean, people talking, you know, whether it's whoever it might be. My dad used to tell me, he said, you've got to listen to thunder. You can't hold about it, can you? So, ex players are talking all the time. We've got Mike, we're talking about Mike Lowen and Shearer. Shearer at it. So, it's not my, not my bag. It's, you know, unless they start talking about me, then. You know, even when they talk about me, I don't, uh, I don't really give them the, uh, the credit for <coughs> coming and saying anything to you. Well, what was responding on Saturday? You saw that. Good for him. Yeah, uh, leave him to it. No, it's nothing to do with me. Is it? No, it's not. They didn't mention it at all. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> James, you played with John Walters on both sides. What do you make of Roy's sports? Going on? for it now, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> You have to listen to Thunder, mate. I'm telling you, you can't hear about it. It's just there. No, listen, that's that's uh, that's between Roy and Johnny, and I'm not making any headlines on on that or, or trying to get involved in it. As I said, I thought it might have been something we got asked about before the Switzerland game, and thankfully we didn't, because that's all we were concerned about. And um, you know, it's not it's not not something that I would be be doing. But as I said, that's. Nothing to do with me, it's none of my business. Are either of them playing for Bulgaria tomorrow? <laughs> Any last questions? Go on, Philip, you must have one more, I can ignore <laughs> Go on. I'd just, I'd just like to ignore you again on the last one, that's all. Just while we're having fun and having this, you know, this preamble. It's all right. All done? Can I just remind you that everything that was said after the 11 pm embargo is after 11 pm? Yeah. Okay, remember that please, anyone who's tweeting or anything, anything that was said after the embargo is after the embargo. Thank you very much.